In certain cases, the concept of an alternate juror, in some cases, alternate jurors are selected. And whether or not to select alternate jurors or not depends largely upon the length of the trial and the agreement or the desires of the parties. Sometimes we will agree to select 12 jurors and all sides agree on a unanimous verdict of 10 jurors or more in the event someone gets sick or is involved in an accident. What that means is all 12 will deliberate and participate in the deliberations, but if someone gets sick during the trial, now we're down to 11, by agreement of the parties, we may just proceed with the 11. In other cases, where it's going to be an exceptionally long trial, we may agree we're going to pick two alternates. What that means is if someone, if someone gets sick or has a family emergency and for some reason can't complete the trial, and things do happen sometimes, we have an alternate jury, and then that juror, that alternate, will participate in the deliberation process. The alternates typically do not participate in the deliberations process. However, at least in my courtroom, we never tell the alternates who they are, and you don't know if you're an alternate. So it's as important to pay attention to the testimony and the evidence and listen to the law that the judge instructs you on if you're an alternate or a juror, because number one, you don't know if you're an alternate or whether or not you're going to participate. So if you get the sense, I think I'm an alternate, and you don't pay attention, there would be a terrible mistake because you may be wrong. Or number two, even if you are an alternate, if they lose a juror, then you may be seated and you will have to participate in the deliberations.